All right, first question will go to Paul Jones. Coach, you talk about what you've seen from Tyrus Weed and Jordan Davis at that same linebacker position, and, and what was it about Tyrus and, and that position that you thought would be a good fit for him at Sam linebacker? Yeah, both of those guys have done a pretty good job so far picking up the system. Uh, you know, you take out spring ball and those reps that they would have had, uh, I really feel pretty good about how they picked it up overall. Um, as far as both their skill sets, they're both pretty physical kids. Uh, both play hard. Uh, both are not afraid to, to set the you know set the edge on the line of scrimmage, and they have the twitchiness you want in the pass rush. And they also have the unique combination of the athletic ability you you ask of them to drop into space and coverage once in a while. So that was good. Uh, speaking specifically to Tyrus, like you asked, uh, I think he did a really good job of just adjusting and coming from an inside linebacker position. Uh, he has some natural pass rush ability. Uh, he's got some explosiveness, and then he's almost 260-some pounds. And so when you add those two things to get together, uh, it's a pretty nice combination to start with on that edge. Next, we will go to Ben Portnoy. Coach, you mentioned that transition for Tyrus from inside linebacker to outside, I guess. How do you kind of bring that development along? And I guess what kind of goes into making that transition? Yeah, I think the thing that's easiest for them is anything we ask of them to go off the ball into coverage because they've already done that, right? So blitzing from off the ball, dropping into coverage from off the ball, they already know that naturally. So to me, the biggest transition for those guys is actually having to play a six technique or a five technique or a nine technique where they're on the ball, rushing the passer, just because the game gets you so much faster. I mean, it's, it's really hand-to-hand -hand combat at that level when it comes to your pass rush and then uh, stopping the run. So I think that's the biggest difference in my experience when guys have transitioned. We had a guy at Washington State did something very similar uh, my first year there. And so it's not the first time I've been a part of that whole thing, but uh, Tyrus has done a nice job of, of working through it. I will go back to Paul Jones for the next one. Coach, you got a lot of veterans back on special teams, uh, not so much in the return game, but as far as your kicker and punter and long snapper, just what battles are you seeing out there on special teams? And are there any guys that are starting to emerge in the return game, whether it be kickoff returns or punt returns? Yeah, the first part of the question, uh, as far as the experience, we do have experience, but I've been really pleased with the youth in our group too that we brought in. Uh, the competition there has been really good. So I would say we have battles at every position, legitimate ones, not ones that I'm just trying to uh, fabricate on my own. I mean, those guys are really competing very well on a daily basis, and, and competition brings the best out of those guys because uh, if you can't handle a little pressure at that position, that's, that's a problem, and uh, they've done a nice job there. As far as the return game and the returners, um, not yet. I wouldn't say anybody's pulled away. You know, we still have a pretty big pool there of guys and we'll need to work through that over the course of the next two weeks and getting into game week. But uh, I feel good about our, our pool of players that we have there, but I wouldn't tell you that we've narrowed it down yet. Next, we'll go to Dalton Middleton. Hey, Coach, kind of building off of that, um, you mentioned some of the youth. What have you seen out of Hayes Hammond at long snapper so far? Yeah, I've been very pleased with Hayes. I've been very pleased with Hayes. Um, you know, we joke with him and Paul, it's like they're brothers. I mean, they look alike. Uh, they play alike. I mean, it's crazy, but uh, they really, both of them are snapping a good ball, but I've been very pleased with how uh, both those young snappers, even Colby Cox, both of them have done a really good job. Next, we'll go to Derek Thomas. I'm sorry, Derek, I can't hear you. I wanted to ask about the, the return game. So, um, because the return game and special teams can definitely impact you and change the flip the field for you. What are we looking like as far as who's going to be our primary returners? Return return. Yeah, you know, kind of the same question uh, there a minute ago. I, I don't have that narrowed down yet completely. Uh, we have a good pool. I mean, we've got all the running backs back there working it. We've got a couple different receivers, even a, a DB or two here and there that are working through it. And so, for me to give you a name right now, I think that would be false. It's really a pretty good competition where we're charting everything uh, from just a, a possession standpoint. But then the next thing is we'll get into scrimmages and, and be able to see who can make the cuts and run through the smoke and different things that we're asking them to do in that, in that phase. Next, we'll go to Robbie Folk. 
from that. Uh, I know different coaches and special teams have different philosophies on who gets on the field. A lot of coaches go with the with the young guys, and that's kind of their first introduction to college football. Some coaches go with the best athletes, try to get the best athletes on the field. What's your philosophy on who gets on the field in special teams, and how often you use some guys that play some primary positions? Yeah, it's not just my philosophy, it's Coach Leach's, really. It starts with him. You know, I'm fortunate to work for a guy that believes in the third phase as being very important. And so our personnel, I mean, we're going to have starters playing on special teams in specific roles. And so, uh, yes, there's going to be young guys out on the field. Yes, there's going to be old guys out on the field. It's going to be the guy that can execute that assignment to the best of the ability within the group. Um, now, there obviously has to be a give and take there. You can't have starters playing every play, play on defense or offense and every play on special teams. but. You also can't go lose a game in the third phase. So uh, that, that starts at the top, though. That's really Coach Leach and a credit to him that allows us to do that. But uh, that will be our, our philosophy. Next, we'll go back to Ben Portnoy. Hey, Coach, just a kicker. Obviously, you brought in Brandon Ruiz as grad transfer, and you got Jace as well, I guess. I, I know it's still early in camp, but where do you all kind of stand it there? And at, at least in terms of a kicking competition, I mean, how do you kind of evaluate that? Is it literally as simple as who's making the most kicks, or what, what else kind of goes into that? Yeah, I think, simply put, yes, it is. I mean, they need to go out there and chart every single day and prove who's consistent. Now, the, the other aspect of that is you get them into scrimmage settings and, and you get them in – and we do team reps every day. But something about the scrimmage setting, to me, that uh, I, I value those reps pretty highly as well. So um, it's kind of a balancing act there. But in the end, it's the guy that can be the most consistent player every single day. It doesn't matter if he can hit one. Uh, from a long ways if, if he's not a consistent guy. So uh, that's what we're looking for at that position is consistency. And uh, I guess where do you guys kind of stand with that right now? I mean, is it still sort of progressing or is there any kind of – It is. We'll start to narrow that down again after this scrimmage, this weekend being our first scrimmage. We'll start to narrow that down a little bit more, try to get it down to three guys getting more reps than others. Uh, with the group, and then going into that next week after the second scrimmage, we'll narrow it down to two uh, that are getting primary reps. We still want to develop all the guys in that room because if you don't, uh, to me, that's that's a problem. But uh, definitely, we've got to narrow it down. Next, we'll go back to Paul Jones. I know he's just a true freshman, and, and his head probably still spinning, but. I guess two-part question. First of all, what have you seen from Jamari Stewart at that same linebacker position? And uh, another guy, young guy, De DeMonte Russell, what all is he able to do right now? Yeah, both those guys have, have done a good job in their roles. Um, you know, Jamari, being a young guy, he had always played just on the ball in high school. He played a little receiver, you know, on his highlight tape. You see that. So he had been in some space there. Uh, but he hadn't really dropped into coverage in his in his high school career very much. So been pleased with him picking up that aspect of it. And then really the biggest thing for him is is just understanding the physicality of the game at this level compared to what he's used to. And so, but he's working his tail off um, and he's getting better every single day. And that's all you can ask from those young guys. Next, we'll go back to Robbie Falk. At last year, one of the state's biggest struggles was special teams. It seemed like every single week they had some kind of miscue in special teams, whether it be, you know, false start or, uh, you know, a fumble or something like that. What did you feel like was the biggest things that you had to work on with this group from last year to this year, some things that, that you feel like were, were troubling last season? Yeah, I would, I would say this, first of all, I don't think any play that happened last year, good or bad, has any indication of what will happen this year. So that's kind of the first and foremost thing for us. But basically, the, the first thing we look for is, is creating buy-in from our entire roster. Because if you don't get those guys bought in, and it's not important for them, uh, the, you know, the top guy in your roster all the way down to so-called the bottom guy in your roster, I don't care what you're doing from a schematic standpoint. It all starts with the mentality of the group. So that's the first and foremost and then uh, trying to just become clean in our operation, our fundamentals, and because there's just a lot of moving parts. It's just part of it. Uh, but that, that buy-in factor, I can't emphasize that enough. So I guess that would be the main thing that we have pushed and will continue to push as we progress going throughout not only camp, but, but the entire season. Next, we'll go to Joel Coleman. So it's kind of a general question, but uh, last year, maybe the year before a little bit, on kickoffs, uh, sometimes the strategy wasn't always, you know, kicking the ball in the end zone or whatever. But I guess for you guys, 
is there a is that kind of a game to game deal or, or on kickoffs? What's kind of the I guess the staff plan as far as kickoffs go? Is it kick the ball in the end zone, try and get a touchback, or does that just kind of vary? Yeah, I think that varies based on game plan, but definitely. I mean, let's just face it. There's dangerous returners all over the country, especially in this conference. And so if you can eliminate some risk by kicking the uh, touchback, I mean, you want to do that. If you feel like the matchup is correct or you feel like the situation indicates uh, something other than that, then we'll, we'll always have that uh, as well. So it really just – it's a give and take on the scenario and the situation and the matchups. We'll go back to Derek Thomas. All right, Coach. Uh, be uh... – I want to ask you about Aaron Brule. What kind of camp is he having? Because we know he, he's ready to step into that role as being a full-time starter in this new 3-3-5 defense. So talk about his development. Yeah, Brule, the thing I really appreciate about Brule is he plays with his hair on fire, you know, on a daily basis. There's not many plays where you flip on the tape and, and Brule's not playing uh, hard. And that doesn't matter if it's defense or special teams. So I've really enjoyed – uh, being a part of coaching him and, and just his day-to-day -day approach. And so I think that's first and foremost. Obviously, he's still working through things, but uh, whether it be technique or, or fundamentals or just the system. But first and foremost, the guy plays the game hard, and that's what you appreciate about Aaron Brule. All right, everybody. we got time for a couple more questions. Um, does anybody have anything else for Coach Brock? Hit the chat, and we'll get you on there. Going once, going twice, that'll do it. All right. Thanks for your time tonight. All right, appreciate it. Thank you all.